along with you and um, the rest of Canada, I am still reeling from the news of what took place this past weekend in our neighboring province of Nova Scotia. I, I'm still trying to wrap my mind around the actual um, horror and um, tragedy of all those people's lives so senselessly taken. I don't know about you, but um, there are just so many different emotions right now that are going uh, through my mind and I suspect going through yours. For some of us, we're just saying, on top of everything else that we're dealing with, this is just too much. This is just a bridge too far. Uh, for others of you, um, you just don't want to think about it. You don't want to talk about it. It's just too dark. It's too deep. Um, I think for a lot of us right now, in these few days after the news of such um, uh, darkness to come so close to us, there's a sense of um, a lack of security for us. Um, just the news that the person who committed this horrendous crime uh, seemed so normal. Um, he just seemed like the rest of us. And all of a sudden we say, well, if that's normal. I don't want any part of it. As we process this, um, I think, you know, right now, we're all still in a sense of shock. And we also, though, need to ask ourselves, how do we make our way? Along with many other pastors that I am sure are having conversations with people, I just want to take this moment with the Journey Church family and anyone else who's watching this, just to take a moment to pause and to say, how do we think about this? How do we pray about this as we um, take the next steps ahead? Let me just leave you with three, three thoughts. Um, I think the first thing we do right now is we weep. I, I think of the story found in the Gospel of John in chapter 11 where Jesus goes to his friend Lazarus who had been ill and he had died before he got there and Jesus came to the tomb. And before Jesus was to show his power that he was the Son of God and that he was going to do a, a miracle, the first thing Jesus did, it tells us, it's the shortest verse of the Bible, it says Jesus wept. I, I think that right now our best response is to know that uh, God weeps with all of those families because of such evil that took place in this, in this moment. That God actually weeps with everyone when um, his creation is destroyed. And I think we're called to be God's people and we weep as well. We enter into the, the pain, we enter into the grief, into the loss. We just, we just enter into it and our only response is not words, but we weep with those who weep. I, I think the second thing as Christians that we're called to, to do also is to wake up. Um, we need to wake up to the fact that we do live in a world filled with troubles and sorrows. Jesus, in his last week with his disciples, before he went to the cross, he said, in this world you will have sorrow and you will have troubles, but he says, take heart, I've overcome the world. It's interesting that, that Jesus, though, holds those two things in tension, that he says, you will have this, but I am here. And I think that for us, we need to just face the fact that what has made this so shocking, this event, is so close to us. I've driven down through that area. I've gone through Wentworth Valley. I've been in places, Shubenacadie and Enfield and um, Masstown and DeBert and great in the Great Village area. And so sometimes I think when darkness and evil comes really close to us, all of a sudden it upsets us in a way that when we hear about that type of darkness happening in another continent or across the ocean or in the Middle East 
or in some other place, we may feel bad and pause, but somehow it doesn't disrupt us as much. But please understand, the darkness that we've experienced right now, um, other places have experienced it and are still experiencing it. We do live in a broken world. As beautiful as the world is, it is still feel filled with such brokenness. That brings me to my final, um, I think, step that we need to do to um, face this time. We need to weep. We need to wake up to the world we're in. But we also need to keep walking. And when I say that, I want to remind you of, of, a, of the most famous passage of Scripture found in the Bible. And it's in Psalm 23. And, and the, the psalmist, or King David, wrote this um, as a shepherd boy. He said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and staff, they comfort me. I think, again, what that passage reminds us of this is that there's not an absence of valleys. It says that the shepherd of our souls, the, the, um, God, um, um, actually Jesus is referred to as our great shepherd, that it says we will still have to walk through valleys that are filled with the shadows of death. But what the promise is, is not the absence of those valleys, it's the presence of the shepherd. And so we walk in faith. We walk not by sight. Because if we only live by sight, we are just going to look at all the disruption around us and we are going to grow afraid. But when we walk by faith, we know that the shepherd is there to guide us, to lead us, and to help us in these times. Now, there are no easy answers to all of this. In fact, I suspect in a way there aren't going to be some answers ever, ever be able to be fully uh, developed. But I would want us to understand that this is where our hope lies, that we need to trust in God and, let, and find in him our refuge. In this, in this time of storm. Can I encourage you that the one way we also speak out against this darkness is for us to do um, acts of compassion and to live in God's kingdom in this moment. So can I encourage you to be kind and loving to those around you? Can I encourage you to think about a way that you can send your condolences um, and be part of whatever vigils there are to show your solidarity with other people in this time of grief. Can, can you um, also be in prayer and um, be supportive to those who are serving us? I think of the RCMP family right now that are grieving the loss of one of their fellow officers, Heidi Stevenson. And here at our church, we have a, a family, uh, Jamie Hawkins, he's also an RCMP officer. Um, can we be in prayer for him and his family? as they navigate this in a very deep and personal way. So, Journey Church family, um, in the midst of these uncertain times, let's lean hard onto our shepherd who promised to be with us through the valleys. God bless you all.